uh, geospatial engineer. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> Actually, she is. She's very modest. But I'll let her do the talking, so please, uh, go ahead. OK, hello, everyone. It's my pleasure to be here. My name is Rekha Zeyla, and my presentation is about OpenStreetMaps and how it looks from a beginner's perspective. Uh, so I'm truly stressed to be here because I'm an actual beginner. So I'm not in the community for long. But that's the aim of my presentation, to actually provide you an insight from the beginner's perspective. And, um, and to begin with, um, as I mentioned, I'm a beginner level, but I'm already a fan. So I hope that uh, it will be an inspiration for you from my presentation to be OpenStreetMap fans after this as well, because uh, I think that it is a tool that can provide a big change for our communities, and it's a tool how to actually get interested uh, everyone in maps and cartography, in our enthusiasm as uh, geographers or GIS specialists uh, to the wider public, because I see that uh, OSM can be this tool because it's so easy and it's fun to, to do it. Uh, but actually, I have a degree in uh, human geography, so this is my alma mater where I, uh, where I finished my studies. And actually, today it was my first time when I was in the courtyard, uh, even though I, I studied for three years. Uh, but actually, my background is in anthropology, so I'm totally humanitarian, non-technical person at all. Uh, I'm super interested in old maps, and that's why I came to study in geography uh, on a master's degree. Uh, and I kind of thought that there I will learn how to map, how to do all the crazy things that maps can do. Uh, well, not really, because I went to the master's degree. Uh, it was more like an overview of so many things that I don't even remember half of them mentioned at my master's degree. And I ended up writing my master's thesis and creating maps for my master's thesis on a vector graphic program, not in a mapping program. Uh, but at the same time, um, afterwards, um, I kind of drifted away from, uh, from the field. And on my daily life, I run an NGO about social entrepreneurship. So I'm all about social, about community involvement, about how to actually empower communities to do more. And uh, that's how I also understood that OSM can play a role here as well. Um, and I understood that it can be a tool that we can use in, in so many ways. Um, and how I got to OpenStreetMaps is a story as well, because uh, it was on a Twitter that somehow I was following uh, Richard Holmes, that is a true guru of OpenStreetMaps in Latvia. Because if, if you can wait, because you will be mentioned many times in my presentation, he is the person to go for open street maps. He, he is the guy. He is the guy to, uh, to know uh, so many things about open street maps. And he is the key person for me to open up the open street map magic. Uh, because uh, when, I, when I kind of started following him on Twitter, uh, one of his tweets said that uh, actually open street map, uh, map territories are following also the economic and social activism, so to say. And as I come from the eastern part of Latvia, the blank spot on the map, uh, which is kind of uh, the least economically active or like society community active place in Latvia, I was like, no, I need to change this. I need to kind of do something so that Latvia would be on the map. And, um, and that's how I started. So I opened up this open street map, just as it was shown in the left presentation. It's super easy. You just click edit, and you start edit. And I was like, whoa, it's so easy. It's too easy. There should be a catch. There should be a catch. And I'm still wondering what's the catch. Because, uh, you know, all those, uh, all those uh, people that I tell that my hobby is to map on open street maps, they say, but why would you do that? Because everything's mapped already. You know, you open up Google Maps and everything's mad, so what would you even map there? And for me, it was the first feeling as well. I opened the open street map, I see buildings, I see streets, it seems that everything's mad. What shall I map? I don't know even where to start. And why would I want to do it voluntarily? And I'm super scared to screw up things because I'm this non technical person without any spatial 
uh, thinking or, or understanding the surroundings and I get lost in the forest and uh, still I don't really know anything even with that master's degree in geography. Um, so I was like a bit scared to screw up things. And, uh, and I understood that there is a huge need of, of having those clear first steps or like guidelines. What actually can be mapped? And for professionals, it might it might feel like well, you know, you can map anything, right? But but for me, starting off, I was like, huh, I don't know. And you can see it on my profile as well, because if you open up uh, this statistical overview of how did I contribute to OpenStreetMaps, I started off after that uh, tweet somewhere in September. You can see that I dropped because it's really easy to start, but it's kind of you know. The thing is to be a regular mapper and to, to actually proceed and to keep mapping. And that's why, again, on Twitter, uh, Rich was uh, posting that uh, some time ago there were mapping parties where people come together because all of the all of the mappers are volunteers. So basically, it's just mostly your hobby that you're doing in your free time because it's so democratic and it's like you know nobody owns it, and that's why it's that's the magic of open street maps. Uh, and, and that's why, of course, it's about this volunteer contribution that matters. And I was like, yeah, I will volunteer and let's create a mapping party in Ryzen. So we created this mapping party in Ryzen that in December, when it was like, I don't know, minus 20, uh, mostly, people showed, who, mostly people who showed up were uh, like, three of my friends. And then one guy who was studying geography uh, here, and he showed up for the mapping pro party from Dogo Pills. And today I got to know that he based his bachelor's thesis on OpenStreetMaps. So, so that was a good contribution again from Rich. <laughs> so basically he was studying geography, but at the same time, base for his thesis was the OpenStreetMap that he got to, got to know only in our mapping party. Um, so uh, to say a bit about my statistics, as I mentioned, I'm from Lazikna and mostly my mapping goes on around Latvia region because that's my main aim, to map as much as I can in Latvia region. But of course, um, only after this mapping party, I start to, to kind of grasp the capabilities that are there in open street maps and what can you actually do I and mean, what can you actually map and what can you use because Actually, there are very many different ways and, uh, and applications and add-ons for OpenStreetMaps. And you can just uh, use so many different, uh, different uh, applications on your phone and in your daily life when traveling around. And just uh, opening up this uh, world <laughs> was, uh, was very good for me. And actually, like being this quite inactive contributor, I kind of tried to do it regularly. It's like, it, it doesn't really happen that regularly. And at the same time, I'm number 11 in Latvia. You can imagine how small the community in Latvia actually is. And I hope that my message to you would be to get started, to open up the open street maps, to open up uh, Go Map or other applications and just start mapping. It's super easy, you can do it anywhere, you can do it uh, Free of charge and uh, and it's and it's fun. But uh, my takeaways after doing that, as I mentioned, regularity is the key. As for every skill, you need to keep doing because uh, once I don't do it for I don't know two weeks, I understand that I don't really remember those shortcuts that Rich told me, or I don't really remember how to actually do that, or should how should I do that. Uh, but at the same time, uh, everything's on Google and Wikimedia, and uh, there are so many sources where you can actually find answers, and that's again the, the beauty of this community-based platform, that actually all the answers are there, and if the answers are not there, then you can create it, and you can just uh, create answers for the community, and you can be this active volunteer that contributes uh, even in that, in that sense. Um, and at some point I understood that, yeah, it feels like gaming because uh, it's, a, it's a great hobby how you can get relaxed, how you can just uh, go away from the world and game, but with the common benefit because uh, from, your, from your gaming there is a benefit for the whole society that gains this data and basically you're contributing via gaming. So basically 
uh, this gamification is very needed and actually it's my second takeaway that it's super useful to have a task because uh, once I started, as I mentioned, I didn't really know what to map or where to start and what I started off was, okay, I'll find the topic that I'm interested in and I'll just put it on the map. So I started to map churches in Latvala region and I put them on open street maps. Uh, so I started with wooden churches and I put all of the information about that church in open street maps, starting from building, building year, the color, uh, the year that it was uh, founded, and uh, at what time the services are. So basically, open street maps is like Wikipedia of maps, and, uh, and you can do so many things there. Uh, so I started with that task. I got my five books about uh, sacral heritage, and I just uh, was scrolling through them and putting every single church so that there would be on open street maps. Um, after that, I started to do segment by segment in in uh, my surroundings and starting just like browsing through the map. And uh, then, thanks to hands again, uh, there is a tasking manager where you can actually find different tasks what to map. So there's again this gamification that you can uh, get into. And right now on the tasking manager, there is a task about buildings in Latvia and specifically the Rasmus Lots. So uh, please get on it and uh, help us map all the, all, all the buildings in Rasmus Lots because you can see that actually it's quite blind still. There are very many quadrants to, uh, to map, but like so many others have been put <laughs> To, to actually fulfill this task and, um, and to put those buildings on the map so that they would be there. And um, thanks to this global community of volunteers, there have been a uh, very nice request from the global community to map milk chart stands, because that's something to map as well, right? Uh, the place where you put those milk churns and uh, it's a good story as well because uh, I have friends who have created an Instagram account about uh, uh, milk churns in, in Latvia and they are creating like a memorial or a museum of uh, milk churns in, in Latvia uh, that are, some of them are still used but mostly they are unused, unused objects of infrastructure that are those weird objects that you usually wouldn't map but at the same time global community is on and actually if when we started uh, interested to be interested in milk churns we thought that it's something very specific for Latvia or Latvia then we see that milk churns are actually all around the world and they are mapped uh, even like in Africa and in all the continents people are starting to map milk churns so why not so basically you can put a map all you want, all you need. So starting from zebras, from traffic lights, uh, ending up with milk churns, buildings, and uh, your business as well. Um, having the community. Having the community is my next takeaway because, of course, community is the key of all the street maps, and community helps it going. And for me, it has been very important to have this community because uh, even though Latvian community is small, it's very active. Like every single day there is something going on in the Zulu chat that you can also uh, also uh, be members of. Go to Richard and I'm pretty sure that he will tell how. Uh, because like every single day, day there are discussions about how to map, what to map, how to tag, how to create something new, how to, uh, how to do... Like, and, and, and the nice thing is that you can ask stupid questions there. Because uh, sometimes when you start, you, you just, you know, there are these like weird questions, but it's the place where you will be supported. And again, it's super useful to have a mentor or like support person to ask. Again, thanks, Rich. And uh, if you need that support person, I can be it as well. So I can support you in your first steps just to understand the capabilities and, um, and how, how, how it's created. Um, and I want to end up with um, some ideas how to involve more people in it. And uh, with this, I would like to also open up the discussion because, um, as you heard in previous presentation, it's very volunteer based, it's community based, it's not owned by anyone, it's not uh, ruled by anyone, it's kind of a bit, a bit controlled with the board, but at the same time, board are 
volunteers who are just like very passionate about this thing. And uh, I really hope that we can involve more people in, in this uh, really amazing project. And we need to find, uh, find new ways how to, how to involve those people. And of course, uh, for me, the turning point has been these like practical workshops and uh, events. And uh, I really hope that we can uh, host more events and involve more people in it because it's actually a very great way how how to bring maps to more people and to actually school children to everyone who would uh, who would see and maybe an interest and then I don't know go study geography and get involved in so many different uh, roles and ways and I think that uh, one of the next steps that I want to do is to create like design of the first things to be mapped because for me that was the biggest confusion when I started and I think that it might be useful for, for someone else. Um, and of course those task forces for thematic mapping are uh, a good way how to, how to gamify this and how to create more interest for a wider society and uh, like for example also involving geography teachers or those who could bring open street maps also to schools and to other surroundings. I want to end up with, uh, with saying that the more I know, more I don't know, uh, but it's amazing to have a hobby that is possibly useful for someone. So I really see a very big community benefit in all of this. So thank you and I'm open for your questions. Thank you, Regita. Well, uh, your energy is incredible. You make me want to go and go become back. a community yes. member now. Please. But maybe I'll start in Estonia and then come to Latvia. Uh, but uh, we have quite a few questions uh, already here on Slido. And um, the most important question is, which is your favorite mobile app for mapping? Uh, well, I like Everdoor. Uh, what was it called? Everdoor? Every no. Yes, yes. Everdoor, yes, exactly. <laughs> I know the most. But how much time do you spend regularly on, on this mapping activity? I try to do it like uh, at least two hours a week, and that's quite like that's 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 a minimum that should be there. And I know crazy mappers who are having like I don't know how many hours every single day, but I, I'm not that crazy yet. Mm. Uh, the most popular question, surprisingly, not surprisingly, is. Is anyone in interested in mapping party today or tomorrow? <laughs> so uh, those of you interested in the mapping party, raise your hands. I uh, see that. Okay. Yeah. Well, uh, there you have it. The mapping party is there. So who takes the lead and organizes it? <laughs> the guy over there. Yeah. Richard, right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah that's amazing. And actually, there's he's the guy. guy. He's the guy. He's the party guy. He's the party so guy. He, you know him. He's the party guy. <laughs> Go to him and. Uh, and uh, we'll sure get you organized and probably do some maps as well at that party, right? And there's another story how, how we met with Richard for the first time in person. So, uh, so basically it was again because of the Twitter, but uh, we were on a boat in Langala and uh, I was tweeting about it and uh, somebody answered on my tweet, are we on the same boat? No. And it was Richard. Uh, another question about the Latvian community, is there an OSM mapping community? I understand there is, right? There is, there is quite active, like every okay. single day there is something like that. How do you find it? On Zulit, Zulit chat, most likely. Okay. We had to let you a comment on the ways how people can join. Zulit, yeah, afterwards, yeah. Okay, as a non latvian what does Zulit mean? Uh, there's, it's just a platform where the okay. French community chats are going on, I suppose. Yes. Okay. Uh, another interesting question. What is the weirdest thing you have mapped on OpenStreetMaps or discovered while mapping? So maybe not the weirdest, take the second weirdest, <laughs> just not in case. Weird. Yeah. Sometimes there are just those weird lines that you, you really don't know like why they are mapped and you're just like wondering, hmm, interesting, like what was the idea behind that line or, or something. Because I agree to uh, what Ilya said in the beginning that uh, OpenStreetMaps is a chaotic platform. It, it is chaos in, in some sort. So, 
So uh, for those who are like perfectionists, OpenStreetMap might be disturbing. <laughs> okay. Uh, but it's fun again, I understand. It's a gamification part there, and you can, you can it's a great community. Uh, a question about, uh, specific to Latvia again, couldn't we upload Valst, Zimis, Dienst, Contours for buildings, they are available in Open Data Portal. I'm guessing this is the building registry or something like that? Yes, and I'm, I think that this is... Uh, is it one of the layers? No? Well, then again, it's, yeah, cadastres. So, uh, I know that cadastres is on, and actually it's, yeah, you, you have cadastres, and actually you can kind of use AI and, for example, Rapid ID Mapper to actually put that together, and then, of course, you need to be that human who kind of understands whether the building is there or not, and kind of rules it out, but at the same time there are nice applications of it. So it's on. Do you know uh, if there's an OSM uh, group in Estonia as well? Should be. Lithuania? Most likely. Do you guys do something together as well? I think next speaker is from Lithuania, so most likely he will oh. tell more about Lithuania. Is it so? Yeah, right. And I, I'm pretty sure that in Estonia there is a community as well. I don't know how active are there. Maybe the board knows. <laughs> Let's see, let's see. Uh, well, definitely I'm going back to Estonia and I will, I will try and find out. And map. Yeah, and map, that's true. And also map. Uh, okay, let's see, some more uh, questions. Street Complete is a great app that makes mapping a game, even a quest. Is there a hope to make it for iOS as well? Maybe not a question for you, maybe I can <laughs> ask what I can watch. Yeah? Uh, okay, uh, I uh, participate in the to complete and the basic items were yes, and it would took about one year of work for experienced iOS developers. So, uh, it is a very big project and requires well experienced iOS developers, preferably. So, uh, in in theory, yes, in practice, it's really hard. Okay, so any uh, iOS developers volunteering to do pre work? To For what, yeah? <laughs> no? Okay. Maybe not the best crowd. We'll try and hack it down next time. Um, yeah, well, otherwise, the comments here are just uh, commending you, saying that they want to join, and uh, thank you for coming here, inspiring us.